Hi guys, welcome back to Introduction to Rust. My name is Tensor. Last time we built our DOM module as well as our HTML parser. Today we're going to be looking at building out our CSS module. So CSS or a cascading style sheet is a series of rules. A rule includes one or more selectors which are separated by commas followed by a series of declarations which are enclosed in braces. Now these selectors can be a simple selector or they can be a chain of selectors joined by what are called combinators. Our implementation is only going to support simple selectors. We're also not going to support cascading. Cascading is when we can have multiple CSS sheets and they can override one another. And because this is a fairly difficult function to actually put into our browser engine, we're going to just ignore it for now. So in our browser engine, a simple selector can include a tag name, an ID prefixed by a number sign, any number of class names prefixed by a period or a combination of the above. If the tag name is empty or has a asterisk in it, then it is a universal selector which will match it with any tag. So there are many other types of selectors in CSS, in particular CSS3, but we'll just deal with these for now. So to start out our module, we want to bring in the FMT library because we're going to implement debug for some of our data structures and we also want to bring out the default module to allow us to put default values inside of our data structures. Our style sheet itself is a fairly simple struct with one single field in it called rules and the rules is just a vector of rules. So the rule itself will have two fields in it, selector and declarations, and both of these will also be vectors with their respective data structures inside of them. Our selector struct will have two fields in it as well. One will be simple to account for simple selectors and the other one will be combinators to account for combinators. So simple selector will have its own struct. Combinators will just be a vector of characters. Our simple selector will have three values. We'll have the tag name, which will be an option string. We'll have our ID, which will also be an option string. And then we'll have our classes, which could be a vector of string. So our selectors can have multiple classes on them, and we want them to have a single ID as well as their tag name. Then our declaration struct will have a field called property, and then the value itself. So this is similar to like a hash map. You have the property that you want to affect, and then the value that you want to set in that property. In our CSS implementation, our values can be colors, lengths, or it can be an other type. So our color will contain a color, our length will contain an F32 and then a unit, and then our other will just have a string inside of it. And here's our unit enum. So we have a lot of different values. The EM is our calculated or inherited font size. Our EX is the height of the font's X character. Our CH is the width of a font's O character. Our REM is the font size of the root element. Our VH is 100th the height of a viewport. Our VW is the 100th the width of the viewport. Our VMIN is 100th the smallest side. Our VMAX is 100th the largest side. PX is pixel. MM is millimeter. Then we have Q, which is 1 4th of a millimeter or a quarter. Then we have a centimeter, which is CM. IN, which is 1 42nd of an inch or a point. Then we have PC, which is 12 points or pica. And then we have PCT, which stands for percentage. For those of you who know a bit about CSS, you'll understand that all of these actually do exist in CSS as well as a lot of other ones. Our color will follow the RGBA color scheme. So each of these will be an F32 and R stands for red, G stands for green, and B stands for blue with A being the alpha of the color. This is basically its uh, brightness or opacity. At least that's an easy way to think of it. All right, so now we've implemented all of the data structures that we want. We want to create some methods for these data structures. For our style sheet, we just want a constructor function called new. This just takes in our rules, which will be a vector of rule, and then it will output a style sheet that is instantiated with the rules inside of it. Then we want to implement the default trait for our style sheet so that we can put in default values. It will take in nothing and it will output a self. And we haven't seen this big self nomenclature before, I don't believe, but it really just refers to the style sheet. So we will be outputting a style sheet object with a empty vector inside for the rule. We also want to implement debug for style sheet. So in our FMT function, we'll create a mutable string 
string. Then we will iterate through our self.rules. And if you remember, our self.rules is just a vector of rule. And we want to check to see first if the length is not zero. Then we want to put some return statements between each of our rules. We want to push this into our rule result string in this format. And then we want to write this out like this. So just write out our string and it should show a decent format for us. Next, we want to create some methods for our rule. We want to create a new method for our rule so that we can create a new rule. And this will just take in selectors, which will be a vector of selector, and then declarations, which will be a vector of declaration, and output our rule. And then we'll just instantiate a new rule this way. We also want to implement default for our rule. So our function default will be like what we had up here as well for style sheet. This will just create two empty vectors for our selectors and declarations. Then again, like style sheet, we want to implement our debug for rule. We'll create two mutable strings and then we will create a tab string. So this contains five spaces. Then we will iterate through our selectors vector and we'll do exactly what we did before except this time rather than putting in return characters we're going to put in a comma and a space between each of our selectors and then we're going to push that into our select result string for declaration we're going to push the tab between each of our declarations and then we're going to push this into our declaration string and then that will be followed by a return character and then finally we're going to write this out with our selector in here and then our declaration in in here. For our selector, we want to implement a new function as well. This is exactly the same as what we had before, except we are putting in a vector of simple selector and a vector of characters for combinators and then outputting a selector. Then we're just instantiating our selector. Then we want to implement the default trait for our selector and our default function We'll just take in nothing and output a self, so this selector. And we'll also just create two empty vectors for this. Then for the debug trait, we want to create a mutable string. Then we're going to iterate through our simple selector vector. We're going to check to see if it is greater than zero. And then we're going to put commas between each of our simple selectors. And then we're going to push them into our string. And then we're going to write out the result. Then we want to create a new method for our simple selector. This will just take in our tag name, which will be an option of string then the id which will be an option of string and then the classes which will be a vector of strings and then output our simple selector and then we'll just instantiate our simple selector by putting tag name id and classes into the respective field then we want to implement the default trait for our simple selector again this will just output itself and we'll just instantiate our simple selector with none for tag name none for id and a simple empty vector for classes then we want to implement the debug trait for simple selector we'll create a mutable string and then then we will match on our tag name. And if we get some back, then we want to take that T out and push it into our string. Then we want to match on our ID. If we get some back, then we want to push in a number sign first. And then we want to push in the actual S from inside of the sum. And then for class, we want to iterate through our classes we want to push each in with a period before each class and then the class itself. And then we want to output our string. We want to implement a new function for our declaration. So this has the property, which is a string, and then the value, which is of type value. We're just going to instantiate our declaration with property and value inside of it. Then we implement default for declaration. And for our property, we just have an empty string. And then for our value, we have value, other, and then an empty string inside of it. We also want to implement our debug trait for declaration. This will just be fairly simple where we'll just write out self property and then a colon and a space and then self dot value with the debug flag. So our debug for value value will just be a match statement on self and we'll implement a write function for each of the types. In here we have color where we just take a ref of C and then we just use the debug flag to print it out to the screen. Then for length we just want to get our F32. We're going to leave the unit itself out and then we're just going to write that. And then for other we want to get a reference to S which is the string inside of it and then we just want to write that string out. Alright so finally we want to create a method for color to create a new color. This will take in our red, our green, our blue, and our alpha, and it will output a self, which will just be a color, and we'll just instantiate R, G, B, and A inside of our color. Then we want to implement the default trait for color, and in this case, we're going to create a new color, and it will just have all ones inside of it, so it will just be a white color. And finally, we need to implement debug for color as well. 
and this will just print out R, G, B, and A. All right, so now that we have the data structures for our CSS module, let's implement this CSS parser. CSS itself has a regular grammar, which makes it fairly easy to parse correctly and is less quirky than HTML. When the CSS parser encounters a parser, it discards the unrecognized part of the style sheet and then continues to parse the rest of it. Unlike a language like Rust, for instance, if it runs into an error, it won't automatically just stop parsing. This is useful because it allows us to have multiple different syntaxes, maybe syntaxes that are recognized for older browsers and newer browsers. So our CSS parser is going to be very similar to our HTML parser. The main structure for our CSS parser will have a lifetime A and it will just be an iterator of characters that is peekable. And we talked about peekable in the last tutorial. Like with our HTML parser, we want to have a bunch of different methods for our CSS parser. I'm going to go fairly quickly through this because this is a rather a large file, but hopefully you guys will be able to keep up. First we have our new method which allows us to create a new CSS parser from a string. So it takes in the CSS file, converts it into a string, and then we create a iterator of characters that are peekable. Then we have our parse style sheet method which is our main entry point for our style sheet parser. We create a default style sheet with all the default values in it. Then we'll have a wall loop, which allows us to go through each of our characters. It will identify our selectors, our styles, and our rules, and then put them in the appropriate parts. For our selectors, we'll call on the parse selectors method. For our styles, we'll call on the parse declarations method. And then for our rule, we'll create a new rule with our selectors and styles inside of them, and then return our style sheet. For parse selectors, we want to take in mutable self and output a vector of selector. This will create a empty vector first called selectors. So here's a piece of CSS. Our selector is something like this. For instance, this signifies that we want to apply this particular thing to our entire block of HTML. And then we have a head selector here, a body selector here, a div selector here. Then we have a dot gold class. So remember our selector is literally the word up until the actual open curly brace. We want to iterate through our characters and we want to make sure we don't run into our curly brace. Then we want to make everything before that curly brace into our selector. So we're going to call parse selector on it. And we're going to check to see if our selector is not the default selector, meaning it actually exists. Then we want to push it into our selectors vector. And we want to check to see if we have a comma. If we have a comma, then we keep iterating and this while loop will loop again. So it means that we'll find another selector or we'll find a bracket. Then we'll just go to the next character and we'll just return our selector selectors vector. The parse selectors method here is a little bit more complicated. So we create a mutable simple selector default value and a mutable selector of default value. Then we consume all the white space. Then we want to see if we have a simple selector. So we match on self.characters.peak and we want to see if sum, then we're going to return self.parse identifiers. This is just basically differentiating between the different types of selectors. You want to just get all of the basic selectors. So the quote unquote simple selectors. Then we want to create a value called multiple IDs. We want to set it to false and we want to say while self.cares peak and then map and while we're not getting a comma or we're not getting our closing bracket and it is not white space. Then we want to match on cares.peak and we want to see if we have an ID with a number sign and then the selector name. We want to see if it's a class. So class, has, class is preceded by a dot and then for everything else so anything that's invalid we want to ignore it. Then finally, after we get past all that stuff, we want to make sure that our simple selector is not equal to simple selector default, which is just an empty string. And then we want to return our selector data structure. So now we have our parse identifiers method. This was called way up here. So this is when dealing with a normal identifier. We also are calling it here with the class as well. This creates a mutable new string. Then we match on our iteration through our characters and we want to see if our start is valid. If it is, then we just want to take it and we want to consume it and then push it into our ident string. Then we want to convert it to lowercase and return it. 
Then for parse ID, we want to come through here and we want to match on our slice of identifier and the string that we get returned from it. And we want to check to see if it has an empty string. Otherwise, we want to wrap our identifier into an option. Then for our parse declarations method, we want to parse all of our declarations for a rule. So this will take in mutable self and output our vector of declaration. We'll create a new declarations vector with the default values in it. Then we will go through our characters iterator. We'll make sure we're not hitting a closing brace. We want to consume all the white space and then we want to find all of the properties. So the properties are this part. They come before the colon and after the opening brace. For our body, we have a display property and we have a margin property. So we want to consume everything before that colon and convert it into lowercase. Then we want to consume all the white space and then we want to consume the value, which is everything after the colon and before a semicolon, before a carriage return or before a closing bracket. And then we convert that into lowercase. And then we want to match each of our properties now, these are the different properties that we can deal with inside of our CSS. This allows us to translate the color. Then we have all the stuff that deals with size. This is all translation of length. So anything else will go into our other value. As you can probably guess here, most of our CSS is going to be just about moving things around and changing the colors, at least in this particular browser. Then we create a new declaration and we put in our property and our value enum. So whatever the value was based on this pattern match here. Then we want to take all those declarations and push them into our declaration string as long as we are before a semicolon. Otherwise, we want to consume all the white space and we want to consume everything before a closing bracket. So if we do not have a semicolon, we just want to wait until we hit a closing bracket and then we want to consume all the rest of the white space and then return our declaration. Again, we have our consume while function like we had in our HTML parser and this is what we've been using for all of these other parts up here. Our translate length function takes in the value which is a slice of string and we'll output a new value we'll create two mutable strings and then a boolean which is true then we're going to iterate through value.characters then while c is a number and parsing num is true, then we want to parse the actual number that we're looking at. And we want to push it into our number string. Otherwise, we want to parse the unit. We do not want to put that into our number string. Instead, we want to put that into our unit string. Then we want to parse our number string, unwrap it, and then turn it into a float. Then we want to match our unit. So we're basically taking those from a string and converting them into our enum type. All right, so now we have our translate color function. This takes in a slice of string outputs a color. First, we want to check to see if our color starts with a pound sign. Then we want to check the color length and we have two different lengths. We have length of four and length of seven. If we look back in our CSS, you can see that we have two different types of colors. One of them has seven characters. The other one has only four. So these are both hexadecimals and we want to split between one and the other so that we can parse both. So for color length seven, we take and we match on U8 from Radx. This means that we're converting from a hexadecimal to a character. Then we're just taking slice one to three, which is the first two characters. We're putting them in for red. Then we want to convert them into an F32 and divide it by 255. We do the same for green. We're from three to five and the same from blue from five to seven. Then with line four, we take slice one to two. So one character and then we divide it by 15.0 as an F32. And we do the same for color green from two to three and from color blue from three to four. Then we return our color with red, green, blue, and then our alpha as 1.0. Otherwise, we return white, which is our color default. Now, if we run into a color that starts with RGB, then we can't parse it. So we're just going to return the color default. We run into a color that starts with HSL, then we can't parse it. So we're just going to return default. Then we want to match on the color. And we've got a ton of different colors in here, everything from black, silver, gray, and these are all just different color codes that we've put in as colors. And I don't know why I went this crazy, but I did. You can see that it comes all the way down here from yellow green to Rebecca purple. And then at the bottom, if we don't match one of these tags, then we just want to return a simple black color. Then down below this, we have all of our various Booleans that we used to check to see if we were parsing properly. All right, so that's it for our CSS parser. As always, this code will be on GitHub. I know that I went through this at sort of a breakneck pace. After the holiday, we'll come back and we will build our styles module, which will help us take the CSS parser and the HTML parser and create what is called a style tree, which are basically just style DOM nodes. And then we will be able to create our layout tree, which will deal with boxing and 
things like that. And we'll actually allow our CSS to be able to modify the position of things. And eventually we'll be able to put all of this inside of a window and actually run some HTML and CSS. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you disliked it, then by all means, download it as much as you like. Have a happy new year, you guys.